Chapters was reciprocal. Chapter six was reciprocal functions, where you had to graph them and you also had to solve them. There was expressions and equations, and you simplified the expressions and solved the equations. It was a good time. No, that's absolute value. Shave the outside. Oh no, that's inequality. Okay, all right. So many graphs, so little time. Okay, 34 seconds of Basil and I naming grade 11. I did it again. I'm trying to move it digitally and I can't. Okay, so we are going to find the roots of the rational equation. Okay, so let's just for a moment decipher what the question's asking us. So what's the other name for roots? X-intercepts. Okay. So looking for the X-intercepts. And when we're looking for the X-intercepts, we know that Y is equal to zero. zero. The only reason why I say that, now this one's already set to zero, so we're good there. But if I gave this to you as an F of X question, like for this function, determine the roots. Kind of, yeah. So you would know to substitute in zero for your y. Does that make sense to everybody? Like if it was given to you as a two variable equation. So this one's already done. So we're going to do it algebraically. So we're going to go back to grade 11, everyone. Grade 11. So we have a fraction. We have a fraction. No, no, we actually don't. Okay, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Really? You guys do that? Yeah, I noticed you never did that, but no, that's the first thing I do, yeah. Okay, so I've learned something new about you guys. So you need to isolate fractions. Yeah. I like to isolate radicals. No. No? Okay. So here's the thing, though, is that going back to Chapter 6 from Grade 11, we the easiest way to do it is to get rid of the denominator. And in order to get rid of the denominator in an equation, because it's very different when we're dealing with expressions, Good news, everybody. We're not dealing with expressions. That was grade 11. So in, in this one, we're going to multiply everything by the LCD. Do you guys remember what the LCD is? Lowest, Lowest common denominator. In this case, it's x plus 2. So this would have a denominator of 1. That would have a denominator of 1. That would have a denominator of 1. Right? They don't have to be fractions. So we're going to multiply numerators. So multiply every term, but just the numerators by the LCD. So, okay, great question. For this, what is our lowest common denominator? Definitely one, right, because that repeats. But what else? is going to be the denominator that will cancel out for all fractions. X plus 2, right? Because what's X plus 2 times 1? Still X plus 2. So we don't need to write the 1. So in this case, my LCD is X plus 2. So we're going to take our equation. And we're going to times the numerators only by x plus 2. And because we are doing it to every term, and Basil, I guess this is where your, where your uh, isolating might have come into handy. Yeah, I already did. So I'll put back in while you were doing this. <laughs> I did the fraction and then I factored it. Okay. All right. So, What's the, what's the term that's going to get cancelled out, right? It's this denominator is going to cancel out that. And that's our goal. And then we're literally going to multiply everything else through. So x times x plus 2. So that's going to be x squared plus 2x. The 6 is still there, ladies and gentlemen. That didn't get cancelled out, so add 6. And then my... So we're going to treat this as a negative 5. Negative 5 times by x is negative 5x. And a negative 5 times by a positive 2 is a negative 10. 
and that equals zero. How are we going to solve this? How we, we're going to either factor, we're going to quadratic, and we know that because we got the x squared. Okay, so factoring or quadratic, but I got to combine like terms to see what I know. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. I can factor that pretty quickly. Yeah. Anybody lose an equal sign as we were going? No. Nobody would ever lose an equal sign, right? Never. Never. That's not who we are. That's not what we do. So where are my roots? Positive 4, negative 1. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to check it with... I'm going to use my graphing calculator. That's never it. Yep. Sure. Can you bring it to me, though? Oh, you're on fix, yeah. I don't even know what to say to that. That is on video. Good call. Okay. All right. So I, I put it in and then I went back because I wanted to make sure that middle term was um, fully in brackets so that the minus five wasn't attached to a denominator or anything. So I put that back in. What happened? Is your window weird? Oh, I know my window's weird. Yo. Okay. So that's a weird looking graph. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. It does have an awesome tip. <laughs> it's um not there. Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't know if this one will show it, and this is really the piece that we need. Because what is this question asking us? X-intercept. X so if looking at this really unique, we'll call it unique, we won't call it ugly, unique graph, it's unique, um, where are the x-intercepts? Positive or negative one. I mean, I could find them, because I know you're super excited to do that. I'm going to go to option zero and find. Why don't you do because Desmos doesn't record uh, in this video. So like when we do Desmos, all of a sudden, it, like the videos just stay on my notes and we see the screen, but we don't see that. It is only recording what's underneath. So you see that my first X intercept is at negative one. I love it. Nobody's listening to me. I'm just doing my own thing here. Yeah, it's pretty sweet when you figure the power of graphing calculators. Okay, second x intercept. Basil, I'm very, fun, I'm very proud of you for doing your math for funsies, just for the record. Um, your second x-intercept is at 4. Now, I mean, we could have graphed it, but I think um, the point of this lesson isn't to show you how to graph, because that was 9.1. Um, this was just to show you whether you solve it algebraically or you graph it and solve the zeros that way. They should be the same thing. Okay, what's the connection between the roots of an equation and x-intercepts? Same thing. How many times do I ask you that? A lot. What? I didn't skip anything. We did. 
we did the graph with the technology on the calculator, and then we just verbally answered part C. We did all the questions, we just didn't write anything down. Okay. Um, okay, let's talk about this for a second. How would you guys, let's talk about how you would graph it. If you wouldn't just run away from home. I think I think the first thing that you guys probably want to do is break this down into two and then change this instead of finding x intercepts if they're two equations because I'd graph this. Right? Pardon? So it says solve the equation, okay, yeah. right? So if we're solving it, we're, the only variable in there is x. So we'd be solving for x. So I think the way I'd break this one down is I would have this as my first equation. Like a clock. And then I would have that one as my second equation. Yeah, I'm hot and you're fat. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is getting this is getting out of control. So the way I would attack this, I would definitely First of all, I would find my voice. I would definitely graph them as separate, and then I would find the points of intersection. But I think what we're going to do today is, because I would never ask you to graph this on a test or a quiz, I'm going to ask you to solve it algebraically for sure. Like, that's, that's definitely something I would do. I'm going to get you to graph these. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'll graph it using technology. But if you're looking on how we're going to do it, we're going to treat those as two different things because this is nice and easy to graph, right? It's a linear y-intercept, super easy. But as soon as you break them down into two, you're no longer finding x-intercepts. You're finding where they equal each other. So that would be an intersection point. Okay, got it? We're going we're gonna to get really excited to watch this magic happen. Anybody um, have Desmos on their on their uh, phones? It's a lot more convenient on your phone. Is it? Yeah, from what I've tried. You have to pay. You have to pay to get like the whole thing. It's free. It's free online, so I can't imagine that you'd be paying in the app. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really convenient to use. Like when I was doing like uh, radical graphs, I do square roots. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have my two, and please note, I've put those brackets in, like we know it's implied, but the calculator doesn't, so it would maybe only take negative seven and divide that by positive three, um, so I got to use those brackets. That's exciting. That's also exciting. That's also exciting. So how many points of intersection? Two, okay. Pardon? No, because because we haven't set this equal to zero, x-intercepts are off the table. Okay. We're looking for points of intersection now. Okay. Okay. Because we've said where are these two graphs equal, so we're solving it, and the x values are the only things that really matter. Okay. Because the question, if we solve it algebraically, we're only solving for the x's. Okay, um, points of intersection, uh, super easy, option five on my calculator, and you just got to do left bound, right bound, oh, sorry, first curve, enter, second curve, yes, guess, 
And so my point of intersection, and again, I'll state this aloud, it's the X that I'm concerned about, not the Y. Okay? So my answer here is going to be, the first one's going to be negative 0 0.43. And then I'm going to do that again. So second function calculate, option 5. I got to go closer. What? Okay. So that's first curve, second curve. I had to move closer to my second point of intersection or it would keep giving me the same point. Uh, so the next answer is 3.10. Oh, 3 but then that 7 is going to round that up. Okay. So that's that on technology. Again, the, not the, purp the purpose of this lesson isn't necessarily to do the graphing. It's to solve. Okay. You guys are going to do it. Let's go. <laughs> I never even thought to isolate the the thingamadoodle. It makes it so much easier to Does it? Yeah, we'll try it once. Okay, all right. Well, I'll try it here because it's already isolated. Uh, I'm going to guess because these are my answers. Right? So, step one. I'm going to times everything by the LCD. What's the LCD? So my LCD is going to be 3 minus 2x. Again, you guys don't need to state that, but what is something we do need to state because we're solving for x? We didn't do it in the first one, but we should have. What's the thing that we need to do? Yep, and what are those called? NPVs. What are my NPVs here? Right, so I'm going to take that denominator and I'm going to say what it can't equal. What's the first one? What's the first one? What? Uh, it's the denominator. Pardon? Okay. No, you're canceling those out. Those cancel each other out. Because our whole goal is to get rid of that denominator, right? I think I did my math right on that one. Okay, do you know your quadratic formula? Did you get the tattoo? Can I put it on my calculator? You're going to use your app? No, I can put my calculator Oh, that is impressive. No, no, she probably doesn't have that. I need a tailor. Yeah, we made that Wow, wow. <laughs> For the rest of us mere mortals, we'll use the quadratic formula. Does it help you to do that? I just, like, strategies, like when you're doing that exam, when you've been sitting here for two and a half hours, or, like, your brain starts to get math fatigue. And stuff that you always know Sometimes you need a little bit of training wheels um, just to help you out. I don't know if I've said this out loud lately, and maybe I haven't said it out loud at all, but I would, uh, my words of advice for studying for this exam, I think I would start now, and I think I would start making study sheets for the chapters. Like, I think they're really good 
it's a good strategy to keep yourself organized. And if you do a little bit as you go through these units, like the things that you need to remember, then when you're going to study for the exam, you're not starting from chapter one and going to chapter 11, right? You've already got lots of it done. Uh, yeah, I have one. Um, I, I give mine out really early. Um, I'll find it and I'll get it ready for you guys. Uh, the first exam. I'm trying to answer your question. Oh, oh, you're sorry I can't do it on my calculator. Yeah, I could do it on my app, but I'm trying to be kind and nice. Exams will start on Wednesday the 15th. So that would mean that ours is the last day, which is the 21st, Tuesday the 21st. Tomorrow, yeah. Do we just have a week off until graduation? Yeah. Well, you know, we need to mark those exams, put oh, yeah. them in. Then I got to call you, Basil, and say, I'm sorry, you've got a 43 in the class. I would come back if I were to class. Um, okay, you guys know that you have to do the numerator stuff first, right? Okay, so I'm just going to write this out. We've got the time, so I'm going to write it out. You have to, oh, sorry. You have to do 8 plus root 112, get the answer, and then divide by 6. Um, I think, like, I assume that we're all golden with that, but... And then I'd hit equals. I'd hit equals just to be safe, Danica, just in case you didn't use brackets. I just, you should use brackets. Like, no, I just said divided by six after the Okay, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, hit enter after you do that top yeah. line. Yeah. Wow, we got the same stuff. Oh, anytime we can solve it algebraically instead of graphing, I'm in. Who knew that you guys would be all in for like lots of multiplying and factoring and quadratic formula? And you guys are like, whew, that's easy stuff. So glad I could do it. Because you used to hate it. You used to say it was tough. Okay. All right. What you guys are going to do? Now he's coming to you? <laughs> How the times have changed. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so let's talk. We're just going to do this one algebraically, okay? We're just going to do this one algebraically. We don't have time in our lives to do it both ways. You don't want to watch me graph again. Okay, so this time... We're just going to slow our roll just a little bit, and then I will release you to do it. Um, all the rest of them just had a single denominator. Okay, so you need both. No, not yet. Okay. Step one, if you can, factor everything. Okay. Factor everything. So first term, nothing to... Let me write the notes down on the side. Okay, so there's nothing to factor in those first two terms, but it does happen in that third term. So numerator, nothing to factor. What happens on the bottom? 
Take a two out. Okay, so we factored everything. Now we're going to do our NPVs. They are. What are they? Negative five over two. Beautiful. Okay, step three. We're going to do our LCD. Now, when you have multiple LCDs, if it's repeated somewhere, you only have to write it once. Okay? So we're definitely going to have a 2x plus 5. So those, you only have to write it once. What's left over? Just a two. We're looking at denominators only, right? So we still have a 2. So our LCD has to include that 2. But it doesn't have to be 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. You only write the factor once. Because if not, you'd be dealing with x like to the 8, like to the exponent 8, which would be painful. So where would you isolate this one? I can't, but I'm, oh. but, well, you don't need to necessarily isolate Okay. Yeah. So... Step four, we're going to times everything by the LCD. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I've multiplied all the terms. What's the next thing I'm going to do? Cross them out. Eliminate denominators. So 2x plus 5 that 2x plus 5 is gone. There's nothing to eliminate here, so both of those stay. All of those are gone. So I'm left with 2x plus, oh, I'm going to do a quick one. So 2x times 2, so that's going to be 4x times 2x plus 5. I'm going to do it in two steps just so I don't screw it up. Are you guys okay with that? I took the easy stuff to multiply. Nope. As long as it's mathematically appropriate. You should. Even if you did this, like... 2x times 2x is going to give you 4x. 4x times 2 should give you 8. And so I know it's an extra step, but again, like when you're on a test or you're on that exam, doing, like writing it out didn't take, it took me three seconds to write it out. Um, and I'm more likely to catch a mistake if I do it piece by piece. Okay, um, what am I going to do? How do I solve for x? I'm going to factor because of the factor or quadratic formula because of the x squared. And I'm going to bring everything to the left-hand side because my x squared is positive. It's just rules I have, and I don't know why. Yes, you are absolutely right. It's a good thing I have erasable pens. It's like it never happened. What is this? Oh, that's a charge board. Uh, factor? Quadratic formula? Can I factor it? What's 8 times negative 15? 120? Negative 120? Okay. <laughs> We're factoring. So when you have a, like it's a complex trinomial because it has a variable, or sorry, a coefficient on the first one, 8 times 15 gives me negative 120. What factors in negative 120 add up to a positive 14? Positive 20, negative 6. So that's going to be 8x squared 
plus 20x minus 6x minus 15 equals 0. Uh, welcome to grade 10 again. Welcome to grade 10. We look at those two, we common factor. What am I taking out? And x. Okay, I look at these two. What am I taking out? Negative three. Okay, so I'm going to reject one of those. Why am I going to reject it? NPV. So this one gets rejected. Because of the NPV. So we know that X cannot equal that because we did that up top. Okay, um, how do you feel about algebraic? Love it. Love it. How much do you enjoy factoring? Oh, yeah. I love it. I love, oh, we have another one. It's all excited. All right. Okay, here's your word problem. Yep. Okay. I know, <laughs> and all of a sudden it's over. So again, you're gonna solve it algebraically, but this time we don't have the equation, you actually have to make it. Okay, basketball player, free throw percentage. I'm never gonna get that right, that's as good as it's gonna get. Is given by dividing the total number of successful free throw baskets by the total number of attempts. That makes sense, right? How many times they get it in versus how many times they try? Okay, so far Larry, Larry has attempted 19 free throws. Let's slow down and say that. Uh, and he's made 12 of them. Good job, Larry. Good job. 12 over 19. That's his success rate. If he is successful, on every attempt from now on, how many additional attempts does he need before he has a percentage of 80? Because we know that 12 divided by 19 is 63%. So Larry's lacking a little. He wants it to get to 80%. Oh, I like where your head's at. Let x equal number of additional <laughs> okay what does it need to equal ladies and gentlemen what does he want to get 80 but he wants 80 percent so we need it to equal 0 0.8, everybody agree with that? Because he wants 80. Now, Basil, Basil has given us the let x. Who said that? Was that you? Let x equal number? I asked you, don't, don't victimize me. Don't, oh, not victimize me. Don't put me into that. <laughs> but he did say that, right? Like it was him, okay, that's all I was, just making sure I wasn't getting the wrong kid. Okay, that's it, like that's all I was, Okay. That's it. You were on the right track, man. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. okay. So, I mean, we could always do a table of values and figure it out from there. So if he does one additional shot, we would add one to the numerator and we'd have to add one to the denominator, right? If you know, it says if, if he is successful on every attempt from now on. I love it. Nicole's like, Larry... Larry ain't got what it takes. You could guess and check till the end of time, but we don't have that. 
<laughs> Jacob's losing his mind because I'm going too slow. So Jacob said, knowing that if he makes, if he does another free throw and is successful, it would be 13 over 20. So Jacob took the next leap and said, hurry up, Scallion. It's just going to be 12 plus X over 19 plus X. Because whatever he makes, he's going to be successful on. So it has to go add to top and bottom. It's equal to 80. Okay, go solve it. What does Larry have to do? Okay, what's our first thing? Factor everything. Step two, non-permissible values. I almost wrote down 79. Uh, but does that make sense? X cannot equal 19. Well, X shouldn't be able to equal any negative number. But our non-permissible value is that. And it was already factored, so I didn't need to do anything. Do you want to yell out the answer? I really do want to yell out. Do it. Uh, is it 15? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was not wrong. Oh, God. Okay. So is everybody there? Is everybody, to this, is everybody good with this? I don't think any of this is going to be like... Um, oh, I wrote 15. Nicole, what's the likelihood that Larry's going to do that? Well, I'm just saying Larry scored 12 out of 19. What are the chances he's going to get 16 in a row successfully? Poor Larry. We don't have much faith in Larry's abilities. I'm sorry, Larry. Okay. Okay. 